But I gasped on your behalf when you got Doctor Who, which we're going to talk about now. Yeah. And the, Did you? Well, and in a newspaper, it was the implication was that Doctor Who would be gay. Yes, that was the sun, wasn't it? Yeah. Doctor Queer, yes, yeah. and all that sort of stuff. Yes, so you just expect that, though, don't you? It's like... But, he, but I, I thought that was, that was pretty shocking, really. <laughs> it, it doesn't touch me for a second, really. I sort of laughed, if anything. And, you know, it's like, if you let that stuff into your head, what are you going to do? You're going to go balmy. But you can't let it into your head, because it's nonsense. That's like... It's like taking a nursery rhyme seriously. And the fact that we're sitting in the TARDIS now um, is because someone somewhere had the idea. It's amazing, isn't it? All it's a beautiful Little thing. bits of car radio it's like and my 500 uh, old computer. On it, I still think <laughs> it's beautiful. Well, it's my it's, first, but it's, it's, it, it is amazing. But, <laughs> but all of this, all of this is yours because someone somewhere thought, let's get him to revive Doctor Who. But yes. how did it come, the approach? It was from Lorraine Hegarty and Jane Tranter. Uh, who were head of BBC One and head of, head of drama at the time. drama. And, I mean, I had been nagging for years. Not nagging, but, like, whenever I met Jane Tranter, uh, I'd written Linda, one episode of Paul Abbott's Linda Green. And whenever I meet her, I'd say, oh, I want to do Doctor Who. So they didn't oh, bring right. it back because I'd been nagging. But when they decided to bring it back, my name was associated with it. It was automatically like, oh, Russell Davis wants to do that, and we want to work with Russell Davis. So, But you had for a long time thought it should be brought back. But, you know, probably not. If I'm absolutely honest, I thought they'd never bring it back. And I thought, as a genuine fan of it, it was my job in meeting the head of drama to say that someone should bring it back, because they might do one day, and it'd probably be on BBC Three and be a disaster. But, um, so I, never, I was never that serious about it, to be honest, because I honestly thought it had had its day. Well, I was going to say, but it's important to remind people now with this whole um, yeah. enterprise around us that it was a bad joke at that time, Doctor Who, wasn't it? I mean, people, yes. By people thought it was rubbish. Yeah. Yes, it, its memory had just, just degraded over the years. And you, you know, it was, you forget that in the 60s of Dalek Mania, it was a massive program. It was a huge, and then during Tom Baker's reign. And I think I, I honestly watched every single episode and, and always liked it in every form of Doctor. Um, but it's hard, isn't it? Because it was it just television tradition left it behind. Those three-walled proscenium arch sets with the lighting and the budget that they had. It it and plus people make a joke of science fiction anyway. It's, you know, even they do it with this nice expensive version. So it was ripe to be mocked, I'm afraid. And the key thing which started your rise to being the 15th most powerful man in British television was that you would be executive producer. You would be, in that American phrase we used earlier, yes. the showrunner. What, what Was that crucial to you that you had it to It was, with, and also with science fiction more than anything else, because I've, I do watch an awful... I like television science fiction, film science fiction, and I think, in my opinion, I know a lot about it. And I, and, and, and I mean, even in terms of, like, colours and things like that, it's like wherever I can, I've banned gold and silver, because that's just rubbish science fiction. If people walk onto a television set... Because you think tinfoil. It's alarming. Yeah. It's, yeah. It, it's rubbish. It's yeah. the rubbish end of it.